The lecture 11 deals with volume average Navier Stokes equation of multi phase flows. The research paper, the book, and lecture note referred in this lecture are shown below the title. If you are only interested in flows without thermal energy coupling, lecture 11 is the last lecture for you. The equation number in lecture 11 follows the last number in lecture 10. The number of the last equation in lecture 10 was 13. So the equation number in lecture 11 starts at 14. In lecture 9, we have derived navier stokes equation. In lecture 11, the gravitational force law FGI is added in addition to pressure and viscous stresses. So the navier stokes equation is expressed as in, as in uh, equation 14. The volume average of this equation start with equation 15. The volume average symbol horizontal bars are put on all terms. Left hand side of equation 15 represent inertial force and right hand side represent external force. The volume average of special derivative of a variable A is given by equation five where wy minus x is the weighting function. The volume average of time derivative is given by equation six. Both five and six are derived equation in lecture 10. Let's begin with the averaging of each term on in the left hand side of equation 15. By substituting law FUI for A in equation six, the volume average of the time derivative of log FUI can be expressed by the time derivative of the volume average. By substituting log FUIUJ for A in equation five, the volume average of the special derivative of log FUIUJ can be expressed by the special derivative of the volume average. Substituting the two expressions into the left hand side of equation 15 the, and rearranging the left hand side can be given by the last e uh, expression. As in the case of continuity equation, numerical calculation cannot be conducted unless each of the unknown variable is given in average the form. Next slide transform the equation for that purpose. But be prepared for the transformation to be a little more complicated. The left hand side of the volume average Navier Stokes equation obtained in the last slide is shown again at the top of the slide. As shown in the second line, the volume average of low FEI product can be separated into the product of the fluid volume fraction alpha H, the phase average density, and the mass average velocity J wave. This is equation 12 in lecture 10. <clears throat> the mass average velocity UI is defined by equation 8. Equation 8 also is described in lecture 10. The volume average of nonlinear term U, low FUI UJ is expressed as shown in the third line. <clears throat> the velocities UI UJ are given at the sum of the mass average velocities and fluctuation delta UI and delta UJ. Substituting these sums into ui and uj give the second expression in the third line. <clears throat> the expression in the fourth and the fifth line are the result from multiplication of two parentheses in the third line. 
U I wave and U J wave are moved outside the integrals. The integral including delta U I, delta U J can be deleted. The deletion is proven in equation 10 of lecture 10. Therefore, the volume av average of low F U I U J is the sum of the two terms as shown in the sixth slide. <clears throat> the one is the product of the volume average low F, the mass average velocity U I and U J. The other is the volume average of the product of low F delta U I and delta U J. If you rewrite this equation using the fluid volume fraction alpha a, the volume average uh, replaced with phase averages. So the right hand side becomes the second expression shown in the sixth line. Please note the last angle bracket, low f delta u i delta u j. This is the Reynolds stress. The Reynolds stress can be explained as follows. When the fluid motion is divided into mean component and the fractured component, the correlation of the fluctuating component appears in the equation of mean component. The correlation term acts on the mean component motion as a stress term. This stress is called Reynolds stress. Originally, the Reynolds stress has been defined for the time the average equation. Now it is also used for special average like this lecture. For details, please refer to textbook or specialized books dealing with turbulence. Substituting the equation on the second line and equation on the sixth line into the equation on the first line. Equation 16 is obtained. Here S mom is M -O -M. S mom is called the momentum source term. If there is no evaporation from the particles or no condensation into the particle, then S mom equal to zero. <clears throat> the volume average of left hand side of Navier six equation is completed in the previous slide. Next, we will move on to the volume average of the right hand side. Let's start with the pressure term. Recall equation five. Equation five shows the relation between the volume average of the special derivative and the special derivative of the volume average. From this, the volume average of the pressure gradient had a relation 18 with the derivative of volume average, average pressure. <clears throat> the volume average pressure gradient in the first term on the right hand side can be rewritten as a phase average gradient as shown in equation 19. Please note the integral of the second term on the right hand side of equation 18. <clears throat> In multi phase flows, pressure is affected by the momentum exchange with particles. So, for example, when the particles are accelerated by the fluid drag, the fluid loses some of the pressure as a reaction. So, the instantaneous pressure PYT at a certain point is given by the sum of the phase average pressure PX and the pressure delta P as shown in the equation 20. Delta P is the reaction, reaction caused by particles. The phase average pressure Px is the function of vector x. Substituting equation 20 into the second term on the right hand side of equation 18, the second term becomes equation 21. <clears throat> the surface integral of the first term on the right hand side is 
transform into the volume integral using gas divergent theorem. The integrand in the volume integral is the time derivative of W times pressure with respect to Y, YI. From the differentiation rule of product, the integral can be separated into two integrals. The integrand in the first integral is weighting function W multiplied by the round phase, round phase average pressure P over round Yi, and the integrand of the second integral is phase average P multiplied by round W round Yi. Since the phase average Px included in the first i and first term is the function of x only, <coughs> the first integral is zero. So the only the second integral remains. Here, if you y, if y i and x i are exchanged in the deri derivative of weighting function w, the first term on the right hand side of equation 21 become the expression at the end of this page. By swapping yi and xi, a minus sign is added. We will further transform this equation on the next slide. The equation at the end of the last slide is transformed into two terms by using the integration by part formula. If the derivative operation of the integrand in the second term is moved from the integral, the equation shown on the second line is obtained. Here, the change of round P, round X, and the change of P is assumed to be small in the length scale of weighting function. Therefore, the term containing P can be moved out of integrals. The only integrand on the third line is weighting function W. The integrand of the weighting function of the particle, sub, uh, particle volume VP is the particle volume fraction alpha P. The particle volume fraction alpha P can be replaced with alpha F using the relationship alpha P equal one minus alpha F. As a result, the first equation on this slide becomes equation 22. By substituting 22, 19, 21, 22, 418, the equation and the volume integral of the pressure gradient becomes equation 23. The volume integral of the viscous stress gradient can be derived in the same way as the pressure gradient. It is shown in equation 24. <clears throat> the pressure gradient term 23 and the stress gradient term 24 can be summarized in equation 25. FPI, FPI is called reaction force term and represent reaction force from the particle phase acting on the fluid phase. The volume average of the gravitational force in equation 15 can be expressed as equation 26 according to the definition. Rewriting the volume average Navier Stokes equation 15 in consideration of 16, 25, and 26 gives 20, equation 27. At last, we have had the equation consisting of average variables. However, the radial stress term is newly added as an unknown variable. So the radial stress must be given by using the other variables. The problem how to give the radial stress is called the closure problem in turbulence study. This closure problem has a long history and many models 
have been proposed. I will refrain from explaining such a model here. Fortunately, in the case of multi-phase fold, especially when the particle concentration is high to some extent, the force received from the particle is overwhelmingly large. Thus, not only the viscous source time, but radiant stress are ignored in many cases. If there is no evaporation or condensation, we can set S mom equal to zero. It will describe later how to express S mom. Equation 27, reaching on the last side, can be simplified depending on the given condition. If the fluid is incompressible, the phase average density becomes the normal density. The mass average velocity, ui wave and uj wave, defined in equation 88, are the phase average velocity, ui and uj. That is, the mass average velocity can be replaced with the phase average velocity. From here, I will explain how to give the mass source time momentum source term and reaction force term in numerical calculation. The mass source term S mass represents the change in mass due to evaporation or condensation on the particle surface. This term is explained in detail in lecture 10. The momentum source term S1 represents the change in momentum due to the evaporation or condensation on the particle surface. The force, the force term FBI represents the reaction force of particle acting on fluid. Let's start with the mass source term S mass. Refer vector 10 for the symbols like VSI used in this equation. Although the figure showed one particle K, there are usually multiple particles in the control volume. So the gain and losses of mass on multiple, multiple particles must be counted. Considering the increase or decrease from individual particles, S mass can be expressed as an equation using the summation notation sigma. In this transformation, the weighting function is out of the integrals because special change, special change of weighting function is negligible in the integration of individual particle surface. N is the number of particles in the control plane. Here, we still have the weighting function W, but the weighting function is ignored for simplicity in some cases. The mass change MK dot due to evaporation and condensation of particle K can be expressed by the last equation. Next, the momentum, momentum source term S mom is explained. S mom can be transformed in the same way as S mass. S mom is defined as, as, as the equation on the first line. The figure showed one particle K, but we must count the increase or decrease in momentum on multiple particles. Considering the increase or decrease of momentum from individual particles, its mass can be written as the equation using the summation notation sigma. In this transformation, the weighting function is out of the integrals because as in the case of S mass, special change of weighting functions negligible in the integration of individual particle surface. Here, we still have the weighting function W, but the weighting function is ignored for simplicity in some cases. The change in momentum due to evaporation and condensation from particle K can be expressed and in this way. <clears throat> finally, finally, reaction force term will be explained. 
This term is also calculated by summing the forces of the particle act on the fluid. The force of particle act on the fluid can be written formally in the next in the last equation. The weighting function is ignored. The free drive force is uh, reflected in delta P and delta tau I. In the actual calculation, the first term is expressed using the drag formula. <clears throat> this is the final slide in lecture 11. And Navier-Seve equation for the particle flows are summarized. First, the Navier-Stokes equation 28 is shown again. For incompressive fluid of constant density, the mass average the velocity ui wave and uj wave are equal to the phase average velocity ui and uj. There are several terms on the right hand side of equation 28, but some terms can be neglected under the some condition. Let's see which term can be neglected. First, the viscous stress term and traveling stress term, radial stress term can be neglected compared with the first term API when the particle concentration becomes high to some extent. If there is no mass transfer, the first, first term on the right hand side, S mom, can be neglected. The gravitational term can be neglected in gas solid flows. Under this condition, equation 28 is simplified as shown in equation 29. The fifth term, including beta, represent, represent the reaction force from the particles. Concerning beta, Professor Gidaspo proposed the elegant formula for alpha f smaller than 0.8 and when and U formula for alpha f larger than 0.8. Many researchers after him have followed Gidaspo's proposal for the empirical formula of beta. <clears throat> but here I'd like to point out one thing I am a bit anxious about. What I'm anxious about is that beta in the above two equations are not continuously connected at alpha f equals 0 0.8. Fortunately, this discrepancy does not cause any problem, so I think it might be okay to overlook it. Overlook it. This is the end of lecture 11. Thank you.